Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 12th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you ever wondered how much work someone has to do uh, to uh, fish a particular uh, website, well, it's actually not that difficult. Jan had a great diary on Friday summarizing his search for fishing kits, which typically includes a website that emulates a particular brand and then collects the credentials, and in some cases includes email templates that can be used then to direct uh, victims uh, to a particular phishing site. Now, of course, you can Google for uh, these phishing kits, but uh, one kind of surprising place where Jan found a lot of these phishing kits was on YouTube. Because, well, uh, these phishing kits often come with a little tutorial or advertisement video that uh, will explain to a uh, buyer how to use the particular phishing kit and uh, how to actually send uh, the phishing emails. All in all, Jan found about a hundred uh, different uh, phishing kits. Now, the top ones are very familiar brands like PayPal, Outlook 365, Amazon, and Netflix. The diary also includes a screenshot from essentially an online store where you can purchase these phishing kits. Some of the cheaper ones and Apple uh, letter inbox, as they call it, uh, for $5 and an Amazon one for $3. More expensive one, well, a Chase Bank one for $400. It also depends on what exactly is included, whether it's just the web pages, whether the email template is included, or whether even some email addresses of potential victims are included. Jan also saw a little spike in new phishing kits being posted to YouTube around the April, May, sort of June of uh, this year. Not really clear if this is anything like COVID related or so, if that's just a matter of YouTube uh, cleaning out uh, some of uh, the older uh, phishing uh, videos. Then we got uh, two diaries by DD. First one about the open packaging conventions. Uh, that's a standard that actually, for example, Office Open XML follows, uh, which is sort of this zip container that then contains XML files. Now, as many of these standards, uh, OPC is somewhat flexible, so not always that easy to identify. There is a content types XML file that should be first and the dot rels file that should be the second uh, file and usually is, but of course, since these are usually zipped files, well, uh, the order gets sometimes mixed up. And we've got actually readers responding uh, with also some possible malicious examples sort of using this file. LibreOffice, of course, also understands uh, this file format. The second diary by Didier walks you through his plugin message summary. Uh, this is a tool to analyze Outlook message files. Then we got a couple of vulnerabilities and patches to talk about. First one is for Cisco. Cisco came out uh, late last week with a number of patches that I didn't get to cover uh, last week, but probably one of the more notable ones is in the Cisco Video Surveillance 8000 series IP cameras. Due to a problem with the Cisco Discovery protocol, it's possible to remotely execute code on these systems. Now, the protocol can only be used locally. So an attacker has to be within the same network. It's a layer uh, to a protocol, probably best practice here just to isolate these cameras and similar devices in a separate subnet will help somewhat here. And five bug bounty hunters uh, went after Apple and did essentially a fairly systematic uh, pen test of Apple's network. So they didn't really focus so much on like their products like iOS and macOS. Instead, they really looked more at sort of the Apple services. And they started by scanning, well, the well-known 17 slash 8 network, 
which is owned by Apple. Now, overall, they ended up uh, with 55 new security vulnerabilities that were reported back to Apple. The bug bounty process apparently is a little bit uh, here, broken at Apple, but still uh, they ended up uh, with about $300,000 as reward for their work. On a positive note, it only took Apple often a few hours, sometimes a couple days to fix reported vulnerabilities. Now, while uh, they did focus sort of on Apple services and uh, not so much really on the customer, and uh, they did discover a number of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that could certainly be exploited against uh, customers. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.